Welcome to Stone Watch Mandalorian Season 2, Chapter 12. The seas has dropped. We are now halfway through Season 2, and man, it has been awesome, and I'm looking so forward to what we get next. Stone Watch, a YouTube story, men and women t-shirts, now available on Teespring. Help support the show by getting yours today. I'll have a link down in the description. Chapter 12, The Siege, written by John Favreau. That's right, Carl Weathers, a.k.a. Apollo Creek, and a.k.a. Grief Karga, of course, comes in to direct. Now, I just want to say I wasn't really sure how well he was going to do when I first heard he was directing an episode this season, because I didn't know he directed anything. But turns out, doing research for the show, he's been directing episodes for TV shows on and off over the years, with Hawaii Five O being the most recent, other than, obviously, Chapter 12 for The Mandalorian, which I think is the total knockout. But seriously, I think he did a really good job. There are a lot of really cool action sequences and some really funny Baby Yoda moments. Now, we have a runtime of 39 minutes this week. Now, without getting into heavy spoilers, I want to say I like this episode a lot. Now, we got a lot of big story reveals, in my opinion. If I had to rank on what we saw so far, I'm going to have to go Farrell, Howard, Weathers, and Reed. Actually, Howard and Weathers are tied for a second because I think they feed into the overall story for this season. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree. Now, I think it's pretty safe to say we've seen all the footage that was in the trailer so far up to this point, which has got me pretty geeked to what we're going to get coming the rest of this season, especially after what we saw in this episode. I mean, last week was pretty much all about finding more Mando's Bo-Katan and the Darksaber, and this week, oh man, now I'm about ready to go in some spoilers, so here we go. At the end of last week's episode, the crest was still in major need of some serious repair, even after the Mon Calamari worked on it, and which I thought was kind of messed up, because I always thought that Mon Calamaris were really good at working on starships going by their cruisers and frigates that we saw in the original trilogy but maybe even in the star wars universe you get what you pay for and let's be honest man I really didn't give him that much in the way of credits i gave you a thousand credits this was the best you could do and he even has a kid getting involved with it. He's got him crawled into the service duct trying to unplug wires. Now, I know that the kid's 50 years old, but he acts more like he's like three or four years old, to be quite honest with you. So I don't really know how far he thinks he was actually going to get. And I also think it's kind of funny for a second reason, because in chapter two, when he was trying to work on the outside of the ship, he had mentioned something along the lines about, hey, make yourself useful and actually do something. So now he's making him do something. So I think that's kind of funny, and I just wanted to point that out. Anyway, Mando goes back to Navarro. Grief Karga and Cara Dune greet him upon landing. Cargo then puts two of his guys on repairing the crest. We now find out that Dune is the marshal of the town. The bar in chapter 7 that the death troopers lit up and got burned out by the fire trooper is now a school. Cargo talks Manu into leaving the child there while they go talk about how to take out the abandoned Imperial base on the other side of the planet. Man, this scene was hilarious. The kid sitting next to Baby Yoda is eating what looked like to be cookies. Now, in Baby Yoda's defense, he did ask for one first, but when the kid rudely tells him no, he uses the force to steal the cookies. Now, now, when I saw this, I just laughed out loud because it was just hilarious. I mean, he took the whole packet, man. Whole packet. Horatio Sands returns as Mithril, unfrozen and working for Karga. Apparently, it was Karga that put out the bounty on him. Man, when he sees Mando for the first time, he lets out this puff of smoke or air or something like that underneath his neck. It kind of reminded me of that baby octopus in Finding Nemo. Saved your life! Oh, you guys made me eat! <laughs> What's that? The abandoned Imperial base is not only not abandoned, but turns out to be a research facility, a cloning research facility. Dr. Pershing, the Imperial scientist with the Camino insignia badge on his shoulder from chapter 2 and 3, is back in a hologram form telling Moff Gideon he is all out of the blood containing the M cells needed to complete the project. Because he said he was only able to take so much from the child without killing him. After discovering that the recording is only three days old, everyone realizes that Moff Gideon is still alive, then Mando and crew have to fight their way out before the base explodes. Then Mando, using his jetpack, flies back to Baby Yoda while Karga, Dune, Mithro escape in a stolen troop transport. They are chased down by biker scouts, TIE fires, but saved by a fully repaired Razor Crest. Now this was a pretty cool dog fighting scene. Baby Yoda was in the back seat, still eating cookies and laughing and raising his hands like he was on a roller coaster. After the fight was over, Mando asks him if he's okay. He then pukes up cookies. Gross, but it was funny. After Mando and the child have taken off, Captain Tevia of the New Republic is back and is asking questions about recent events, which I thought was pretty weird because how did they know? He says that Dune's service record was really good and offers her a job with the New Republic. She turns him down, but he gives her what it looks like to be some kind of metal, but then leaves. Now, there were two X-Wings parked on the landing field. I wonder who else was with him. The camera cuts to the bottom of an Imperial cruiser as it flies across the screen. Now, this was a really cool shot, and I'm willing to bet it's paying homage to the opening scene of A New Hope, but it also has me wondering if Moff Gideon has anything bigger at his command. Now, 
we find an Imperial officer talking to one of the techs Karga had working on the Razor Crest. Now, I knew there was something wrong with this guy when he turned around and looked at Mando and all them as they were walking away. Now, why doesn't any hero on any show never notices that one guy that's watching them as they're walking away? I mean, that's usually always the guy who's on the side of the bad guys. You know what I mean? He says he has planted a tracking device on the crest. The officer then informs Moff Gideon. Gideon then asks whether or not if the asset is with him, and the officer says, yes, sir, he is. Our spy has confirmed that he is with the Mandalorian. Now, as the camera zooms out along the wall, I thought these were all death troopers. Now, Bill, if you're watching, I'm sorry, when you actually asked me when I was working on my video, that's what I thought they originally were, but after watching it like three or four times, getting ready to make my video, I don't know what they are, but I did hear somebody refer to them as dark troopers. I don't know exactly what that means. I don't know if that's like something like a brand new character or if that's referring to the old dark forces stormtroopers called dark troopers. I don't know if that's the same thing. So it'll be really cool if they, if they actually tie that into that game from way back when, because I used to love that game. So I don't know. Let me know what you think, but it is in the comments down below. Now, are they saying that dark troopers are made by using blood containing midichlorians? Are they saying that they're force sensitive? Now, they didn't say midichlorians by name, but Pershing said M cells. Now, I'm just assuming that's what that means. Let me know in the comments what you think. Now, I heard someone say that the figures that we see in the tanks back at the Imperial base are what looks like to be the beginnings of Snoke. I don't know. I have to go back and take a closer look, to be quite honest with you. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, next week is Chapter 13, written and directed by Dave Filoni. Maybe Ahsoka shows up. I personally kind of hope when she does, and I think it's fitting that he's the one who brings her into live action but that's just my personal opinion all i know is that this season has been nothing but just all out awesome let me know what you think in the comments down below